now that we uh, talked about uh, get source control, um, let's uh, get into like some hands-on. So uh, I have quite a few repositories out here. So this is actually Bitbucket. Um, I like Bitbucket. Bitbucket. Um, so right here, these are all my repositories, and this is not including the repositories that are uh, that are in my other uh, platforms. Uh, and I even have some standalone repositories that I have on my computer, which is a bad practice because uh, if I don't have though that code uh, with some redundancy or something, um, then uh, I can lose it. Okay. So let's uh, talk about. Uh, so this is the latest one I did. I did some edits for it for malware analysis, um, and this is what I meant. Uh, when you commit code, you actually get a timestamp. You get the size of the file. You can put folders in here. Uh, and as I mentioned in the uh, previous um, in the previous video, you have branches here. So I start development out in the development branch, and then I promote it to the master branch, and then do the release branch. Uh, so yesterday, <clears throat> I actually put some code in here. Um, Let's see if I can find it, or it could be to my dev branch. But anyways, but I put some code in here to uh, add some changes to the assembly that's put out here. Um, this is one of my assembly repositories. Uh, so like right here, I have my make file, and this is where um, a lot of my code is. So if you go and look into, uh, let's go to uh, add ASM. And if you notice, uh, I can go here and see the full commit. And it's going to show me all of the commits of each file that I did as a package. And you can see where I changed things. You can see all types of things. Uh, you can see the history. You can comment out here. Why did you do that, Ashton? Um, you can actually see whose fault it was. We call it blame. You can, um, you can do a diff side by side, uh, which I don't, I don't think I have another file. Uh, maybe this one right here, do a diff side by side, and you can see where the changes were. Um, you can see a lot in here. Okay, so let's go to uh, let's start out with our C programming that we had. Um, so let's go and uh, let's go and find our um, let's go to our streaming projects. Oops, let's clear that out. Let's go to the streaming projects and uh, let's go to C programming. And what I'm going to do is see how we have our source control right here, our you know our source here, and we never put it in source control, did we? So let's uh, see if we can get it in source control today. So what I want to do is I'm going to copy because I have some permissions I don't want to really set right now, just to make this easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my home directory and I'm going to create a file. I'll just make make dire create a directory. And uh, that directory, let's go to, um, let's call it stream. Let's cd into stream and we got a clear slate. Okay. So now let's do a, a copy of our um, streaming so what I'm gonna do is go back and take that streaming project streaming projects C programming and I'm gonna copy that here so I do a CP dash RF and um, let's see what would happen if we copy it here let's copy it here let's see if I did it right okay so we have our C programming now right so now let's go and let's set up a repository so what I'm gonna do is let's go to create repository and uh, I got a couple workspaces in here I guess I'll do the uh, iron automaton and uh, I guess I do use a uh, new project and let's call it um, streaming because I can actually group my repositories and different projects and stuff like that um, and then uh, the name of the repo let's say um, our C program so C program 
Let's go streaming, stream, C program. Okay. So if we do, and we can do something like this. Uh, see, I have one out here like this, but let's just do it. Keep it, keep it simple. So I'm gonna leave it as private. I do want a README file. I didn't cover README file, so I'm gonna cover the README file as well. And then this is the default branch, so we call it main, which in a lot of the documentation you see master. But what happened was uh, <laughs> society has changed. They don't want to hear master, slave, and stuff like that. So a lot of companies change that. Okay. So let's put a description. My simple C program. Okay. So right here you can allow only private forks, allow all forks or no forks. I'm going to do no forks because I want this to be personal to me and uh, I can set the language as well. So let's create the repository. Now there's a couple different things you would have to do. Um, so when you're talking about cloning, cloning is means when we're pulling something down. So you will see this a lot. Now in order to do SSH, you will have to add your public SSH key. I can make another video about that, but let's keep it simple and do HTTPS. I am more of an SSH type person. Uh, some industry, some companies use HTTPS because you can cut them off by their password, but it's kind of unsafe because naked username passwords will go through transactionally. So um, even though you're using HTTPS, that was one of the concerns. But I like SSH because you use keys, but imagine if you still have that key and you transfer it to another computer, you will still be able to grab and clone that company's, um, that company's source control. So they wanted to go mainly by password because you can actually take your public key and put it in someone else's account and you can impersonate them. So it's just something to think about when you're managing source control on a big scaled level. So let's do this. Let's take this and we copied it over. Let's paste it and let's do a clone. Okay. So cloning is actually pulling down and now I got to type my password in. Alright. So hopefully that was the right password. So now if you take a look now we have our stream C program. So these are some of the artifacts that are already in here that we pulled down. That README file is a file that you're looking at. So if you go into stream C program, um, and if you go to, uh, if you say like, um, if you vim this README file, this is what it is. It has its own markup language. And your README file uh, tell everyone how to run your program, what is your program about, uh, what are some of the best practices, everything about your piece of software or solution or your program. And in order to understand how this README file works, uh, you can do a Dillinger IO. Ah, there it is right there. So Dillinger IO is a way that you can actually uh, copy and paste your README in here. And this was a README that looked like they cached it that I made for the malware analysis. And uh, this is how you make everything look pretty. Okay, so it has its own language and everything. Okay, so this is just something to look into. It's called Dillinger IO. Okay, so let's get back to what we really want to do. Okay, so if you notice, you have an ignore file in here. And we get to that. Uh, actually, I'll tell you right now. So the ignore file is what files to ignore when you're trying to commit files to your repo. So I ignore binaries. I ignore configurations such as um, deployment configuration. Not a necessarily deployment configurations, but username and password configurations, uh, connection strings, stuff like that, because that should come from your config database, CMDB. Okay. Um, but in some cases, it's it's a security hazard if you put production uh, artifacts that are like password sensitive, any sensitive production artifacts into your repo, um, it can cause it where everyone can sign into your re into your um, infrastructure or whatever it goes to. Also, what I did like about Bitbuck and I think GitHub does this as well is if they see that you put passwords in your repo and it goes to production and I think they try to resolve the URL of the string, they will let you know and you would have to 
uh, go in and uh, change it. And remember, the history is back there too, so you need to change your password right away. Okay? And there's ways where you can erase the history, but erasing the history here doesn't mean you erase the history on their system. So if you get if they get hacked, you're done for. Okay? So now let's uh, go back and see what all we have. And uh, so let's do a CD. Let's go backwards, and then let's go to um, our C programming. Okay. So now one thing you can do it does give you instructions when you first make a repo. It does give you instructions if it's empty. It'll tell you how to do your init, uh, do the init to initialize it and stuff like that. But we're going to keep it simple to where we have something to get going. This is what I usually do. Okay. So the only files that are important in here is the make file and the driver.cc file. Okay, the driver lst file is an artifact that comes out of build file. A.out is an artifact. Um, we only want what will we need to build and run this program. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a copy. We're going to copy the make file, the driver.cc, and we're going to copy it to our. Um, stream C program okay so I'm gonna go backwards and CD to the stream C program all right so let's do it clear let's do it LSLRT now what you notice is you don't see the dot ignore file right because anything that's dot is a hidden file so in Linux you do LSLRT and add a at the end and so if you notice this git folder right here is very important don't delete it otherwise git will not know um, git will not know a few things like your commit history all of your metadata about your git repo where is it supposed to go connection string all of that stuff also um, you got the git ignore out here which I told you about that so now let's talk about adding to our source control so you have a repo that's locally and then you have a repo that is, we would say, in the cloud. Okay. So first, what we do is, and then remember, you can go back and forth on your repo locally, just in case you're not sure if something is right. You can see that history. Okay. So if you go over to uh, Git, and then let's say add, and we say the files we want to add. So if we want to add all of the files, which in this case we do. We can do a dash dash all, but be very careful if you don't know what files you're going to add. Okay? So, what I would do is just to, for teaching purposes, let's do a make file and do the driver.cc. Remember, and we add all files that we made changes to. Okay? So, and that get all will find the files that you have made changes to as well. So, if we do a get add, and now when we added it, we can do a get and we can do a commit and then be dash m and then our message um, first commit okay and then what we can do is do a git push and let's put my username and password in alright so now let's go and take a look let's refresh this and we push it to the main branch because by us cloning we cloned it by default okay so now we have our make file, okay? So look at that, we have our make file, we have our driver CC, everything went up to that git repo. So now there's another thing that we can do too. We can go in here and we can actually make branches if we want to. Uh, we can tell it to do a new branch. Uh, if you go over to here, it says about the branches and everything. So we can say create new branch, create branch dev. So what we can do is we can tell it what type of branch it'll be. Okay, and in this case, it might be other. Okay, and we want where do we want this branch? What do we want to clone from this branch? Where do we want to copy it from? So we want dev to be a replica of main. Okay, I mean, yeah, replica of main. So we'll call it dev. Okay, so this is the branch that we're going to do our development in first. Okay, so we make our change, and then over here, we do a git. Pull. This will update all of our local branches, okay? From upstream, you see how we have the git uh, git um, dev. We have the dev now. 
So in order to switch over to dev, let's do a git branch, and we can say dev. Okay. So now if we do git branch, it tells us what branch we're in. Actually, let's do a git checkout. Git checkout. Dev. Okay. Oops. Not a git, but. A so now, if you notice, we did a switch now, okay? So if we do LSLRT, we switched our branch, okay? So now, say that we want to add something into our driver. So let's go over to the driver, that's CC, and uh, what we can do is, let's say we want to add an explanation point, and we're in our dev branch, so I'm a developer right now, okay? And then uh, what I can do is, Let's do a git, and then we do an add, and let's do it all this time. Okay, and let's do a git commit dash m added uh, more um, words. Let's just say words, and then let's do a git push. And so look at this. So see how we got the upstream right here. So what we can do is we want to connect this to dev in the upstream, right? So we paste this and we And the reason it did that is because I made a local dev as well, but I attached it to dev up over here. So if we go over to here, it should be there. So let's go over to our dev. Look at that. We just made some changes and they're going to commit that history. So if we go over this commit right here, look at this. There go our change and look at this. It did something weird with the README file. Okay. Look like it did an add and remove. I don't know why it did that when we never did touch the README file. Now let's talk about if we want this change to go over to our main branch. Let's say everything is good, everything tested. We want it to go into our main branch. So what we'll do is let's go over to branches. Actually, let's go to uh, pull request. Okay. So what I'm going to do is make a create a pull request. And in this pull request, what I'm going to do is let's kill, let's switch that over. I want dev changes to go into main, and that's what I'm going to do. So we can keep that. Uh, we can make some comments made uh, word changes and then I can actually set a reviewer in here so these are all the people that I have as a reviewer um, let's uh, cancel that and uh, I'm just gonna leave it like that I can I will be the reviewer okay so I can say uh, delete dev after pull request never do that not for dev and you can actually make it where this branch is immutable where only feature branches can be deleted. Main and dev cannot be deleted. So if you go and create the pull request. So what's going to happen is it's going to wait for my approval. So see how I got an approval and I can approve it. We approved it saying that you can do it. Now merge it. So what we're going to do is merge dev into main. Okay, so now if we go over to here, let's do a clear, and then if we say git pull, it's going to update all of our branches. So, all right, so look at that. It showed that main had an update. So let's do a git, and this is how we switch between branches. Check out main. Okay, and so now let's do this. It says it's behind, but let's do another git pull. That means that my local copy is still behind. Okay, there you go. So see how I switched branches and it didn't update? And that's where the, these are the change deltas right here. Okay, so if we go over and we go to vim driver.cc, there it is right there. Okay. And uh, we can do the make, and then to make everything we have, and there we go. So that's source control in the nutshell. And say that we had a 
there was some particular um, bug in here okay we can actually pinpoint where that bug is or if someone needs to change anything in here okay and then watch this if I go here I can see what commits I did this was that first commit I did and this is that second commit I did okay so if I go back in time I can actually pull that commit and see how we got this commit number right here so I can actually pull based off this commit number by checking this branch out which would be an advanced subject and it's something that I'm gonna cover I'll cover that uh, in another uh, video um, so this is source control this is how we do it that's some hands-on in Linux